How's it going, guys? I'm Tim. And I'm Dylan. And uh, we have something from a Maine beer company out of Freeport, Maine. We got King Titus, which is a robust porter. 7.5% alcohol. 131.17. Less than a month old. It's a hoppy porter, so apparently you're supposed to drink it incredibly fresh. I feel like the hops don't really... I'm not going to be too upset if there's not as much hops in this. I don't like hoppy stouts that much it's anymore. It's a dark nowadays. beer. I mean, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like hoppy stouts as much nowadays as I used to. It doesn't... The aroma's lacking to me. Is it just me? Hold on. I have like 90% of my beer head, so... That should give you more aroma. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta shake it up a bit. Get out of here. Okay, there it is. It's very light. It's a very light aroma. Light on the roasty notes. Not a whole lot of aroma to this beer. There is. Um, I smell Cascade. There's it's a floral notes mostly from that type of beer. Um, I smell Cascade and dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. There's a little bit of a little bit of like a roasty chocolatey note, but not anything to really write home about. The head is. You think I would have a ton of scents come out of this thing? Is how I poured it. I poured it like a total asshole, but. <laughs> No, it's, it's very, very light on the nose. I mean, porters can be, so it's... Porters it's not... are more on the chocolate aspect, whereas stouts are more on the coffee. Correct. So, I guess I hope for more out of the aroma. We'll see as it warms in our hands towards the final end. Yeah. But, let's... Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's today got to surprise you? What's today got to surprise you? Just randomly, let's go. Again, the flavors aren't strong either. For a 7.5% alcohol porter, it's not that strong on flavor. I don't know what's robust about this besides the alcohol. Am I, am I, not, am I wrong? I don't know yet, apparently. There is some, like... Not quite dark, but not quite milk chocolate, but somewhere in between those notes. It was a tiny, tiny, like tiny 70 bit. 70% cacao, kind of? Sure. There's a little tiny bit of, a little tiny bit of coffee. There's some bitterness, which comes through as coffee. But it's not, it doesn't taste like a robust porter to it me. It doesn't. It's it, 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 immensely floral, though. Yeah, I think it, it, this almost might be too hopped for my liking. I almost feel like the hops turned into a black IPA. I feel like it's almost at that point. We're gonna come back to you guys. We're gonna um, we're gonna let this sit for a second. We're gonna talk about it. We'll see you soon. So we're back to give you our final thoughts on Maine Beer Company's King Titus. Their is... robust porter. It doesn't say robust porter on the bottle, but if you look up information on it, it is supposed to be a robust porter. Thoughts, Dylan? Go. I just smell beer in my pants. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, all most of our thoughts on the it's a it's a dark darker flavor black IPA are gone. I mean, it still treads the line a little too thin for my taste. You know what I mean, Tim? No, There's a me. the the lemon citrus notes are far too strong in this beer for me. It's not just a solely bittering hop they used. I can tell it imparted too much hop flavor for my liking. Chocolate and lemon has always been a weird flavor profile for me, and that's what I get, I get that first and foremost is chocolate and lemon, and it's like the floral notes we can I can handle. I don't know about you, but I can well, handle. Porters it. are supposed to be floral to a point. That's, that's the hops, but it's like it's this really interesting yet at the same time not the way I would like a porter to be. Interplay between the the lemon and the almost dark chocolate, but not quite dark chocolate flavors. There's a tiny, tiny amount it's of coffee not in it. Dark, dark chocolate, like some of the other stouts I love are, or even porters. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm not sh I'm I'm still not really sure what to make of it, really, because it. I do think it is a class act beer. I think it's a really good beer, but. I think. The name Robust Porter is misleading. I think it is too. Or just the name Porter in general, without an accurate description of what's going on in the beer on the back. Because I was looking up, you know, what other people thought of it. 
to kind of see if I'm crazy or if other people agreed with me. And I'm getting the feeling that I'm kind of crazy because a lot of people do really, really like this beer. They, they, they say things about the beer that I don't really get out of it, so I'm not sure if it's this batch, if it's... <laughs> And maybe they let theirs because they brew this like every year or something. They brew so, more than that. True, true. There was batches from this year, a couple years ago, but it's a porter, so in theory, if you let it sit, it should get a little better. So I'm not sure when these people had their beer from. Or... Maybe this is almost better, closer towards the end of their 90 day shelf life, which on a porter seems ridiculous. <laughs> that too. It is a hoppy porter. It's a very hoppy porter. But for me, or you, who doesn't like it this hoppy, a nine-month shelf life is A-OK -okay on a 7.5% porter. Yeah. I would love to get another one of these and kind of see how it is after three or four months, even. Yeah. I would just leave it in my fridge, to be honest. I don't feel I need to, like, cellar it, you know? No, like, it probably needs to be cellared. But, I mean, go back to the beer itself. It is a great beer. It's just... The flavors are all there that we talk about, and they're... Not in heaps, it's a very... It's subtle, it's, it's kind of complex. It's a thoughtless drink. That too. I'm saying it's complex, you're saying it's thoughtless, so that's two completely conflicting but it, but it's opinions like, it's here. it's like... I don't want to say it's thoughtless, but it's not very strong flavors that are all competing with each other for for the forefront. Right. Everything is kind of subtle beyond the lemony Which chocolate is, notes. For a 7.5% beer, is very strange and almost off-putting to me. When I drink a beer that high alcohol, I kind of want it to be competitive. Yeah. I mean, that's not super high alcohol, but it's high enough alcohol. Where there it. should be some complexity. Right. I understand where you're coming from with that. It's... Let's just do the final shot and then we'll talk more. Yeah. Yeah. Like... There's just not enough. It was like drinking chocolate covered. There goes Eamon. It was like drinking chocolate covered flowers, except the chocolate was very, very subtle, and you're just like eating flowers. It's really weird. It's not as roasty. Not roasted coffee, but like roasted chocolate as I want it to be. I expect it in the porter to be roasted chocolate and not roasted coffee. But there's very little either to me. Everything's very subtle. All the flavors are incredibly subtle. If this is a 5% porter, I'd be hyped. But it's a robust porter. It's 7.5% alcohol. Um, as much shit talking as I'm doing about this, I'm probably going to give it like an 85, 86. I was feeling an 85 myself. I'm not going to give an exact answer because I can't make up my mind. Because I do take the price into account too. And Main Beer Co., the bottles are kind of extravagantly priced it's for... It's a single cut effect. That too. <laughs> it, they're extravagantly priced for what you... They're easily double the price of a comparable 16-ounce can from someone around here. I understand they're in Maine. I understand it's a bottle. Seven, eight bucks for a bottle. This was seven twenty-five. So that factored into my opinion of it too. If I can get a comparable porter from another craft beer place that's three fifty or even $4 a can that's on par or better, the money value isn't there for me. Trillium Pot and Kettle. That was fantastic. F better than this, four fifty a can. Mm -hmm. But it is still a good beer, and yes. that's why I'm not gonna completely crap on it because it is. It's very drinkable. You can think about it a little. I'm not bit. releasing my bowels all over its face. Exactly. <laughs> so I'll give it an eighty-five. Okay, eighty-five, eighty-six for me. So we'll keep it at that. Cool. We'll see you in the next video.